Welcome to Ready Aiders TV. My name is Lina Fuga. This show is all about challenging stereotypes and giving you facts. Today, we dive into a topic that is so close to our hearts, that is autism and self-esteem. And with me here is our wonderful guest who has accepted to share her story and her insights. Join me as I welcome her to introduce herself. Habari? Nzuri. Let's start with getting to know you better. Okay, my name is Sarah Busibori. I am an autistic advocate, an autistic adult. I am so many things. Um, I was the previous uh, former winner of Light of Autism Kenya 2019 to 2020. Um, I'm currently working as a community influencer at Enable Me Kenya. Yeah, and. I think that's a bit about myself. Okay. Yeah. So we understand that everyone's experience with autism is different. Can you share with us your experience so far? Um, okay. I would say, would you want to know when I was diagnosed? Okay. Because that's a question I've been asked so many times. Um, I was diagnosed with autism at a very young age. Um, I think by the time I was three, I had missed some milestones, but there were more of uh, the more pronounced or visible in when I started primary school. Uh, now there, I had a learning difficulty. So when now the teachers saw that I had a learning difficulty, that's when they assessed me and found out that I was autistic. Yes. So I'd like to know more about your experience in school. Like, did you get any criticism from teachers, maybe other students? What was it like for you? Have you ever been bullied? Yes. Um, back in early 2000s, um, I think we still had little or a few uh, a few things to, to know about uh, neuro neuro neurological conditions in school. So uh, the teachers weren't really... People did have a lot of yes. knowledge about what those conditions are. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of stereotypes surrounding the issue. Yeah, yeah. So we face challenges in lives, and sometimes we, for people with autism, it's more amplified. What challenges have you experienced so far, and how have you overcome them? Um, I have the various challenges, like um, I have anxiety, and I really didn't know uh, that I can be as anxious or nervous, or it can be intense in such a way that it interrupts uh, sometimes my daily routine. And because of now the lack of knowledge, because there is knowledge about autism um, or overall the spectrum of neurological conditions, um, there's, there's just a few, um, a few people that are, can actually tell you about like uh, the struggles. Because me, I learned. For me, for me, I learned from other people who are autistic that uh, unless I explain, because I, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard for people to understand or to express. For, my, for me, I find it hard to express sometimes, even though it's, I don't, it, uh, I don't seem like I can't express because I'm expressing and uh, the benefits of now the therapies is now like you can, you are able to be aware of some, some certain things, but it takes a long time. It took me a long time to know that I have these certain traits myself without anyone telling me that I have. Okay. You've said that you experience difficulties in maybe explaining yourself and interacting with yourself. Concerning that, what have you had to unlearn or learn in the way you approach people? Because most of them might not know about autism. Um, I think it's, for me, I'm a, a, a person, I, I really am a cu curious person, so I would know some things. Yes, I won't, 
I won't really express it as well, but there's always something that makes me discover it in a way. And then now I, I clarify it from someone else and then they tell me back. Like, um, one, one of the, I have friends who are also therapists and I talk to them about like certain feelings that I'm going through or yes, certain feelings and then they give me feedback. That's when I know, okay, this is what, yeah. But now them, they have probably an experience with a child who's autistic or an adult who's autistic, yeah. Wow, interesting. So it's important to have hobbies that bring us joy. So we'd like to know what are your interests and your hobbies and what do they mean to you? Okay. Uh, as I said, I'm, very, I'm a very curious person, so I love watching documentaries. Um, I also love, aside from documentaries, I love art because art was, I think, my first love because uh, that was what, what, uh, what gave me some strengths because uh, I had I'm, I wasn't really, I wasn't really good academically because the only, I think the only subject that got me through was Swahili and I was the first in our school to get a B, B in Swahili. So I'm really good in languages and arts. Uh, yeah, in music as well. What like, they mean to they, okay, for me they mean, I, I can't really explain what they mean to me but it's art is very therapeutic music is very therapeutic and then as well laugh, laughing and just the emotion of being happy and la laughing is the best medicine laughter is the best medicine so yeah so winning a beauty pageant is a really great achievement for people with autism yeah what do you feel like um these competitions how do they help uh, in people with autism? Um, okay. How do they make a difference for people with autism? Uh, okay, it depends on their interests. And for me, because at that, at that point, I hadn't accepted myself before because I was going through depression. And, uh, I was just in a dark place. So, and I knew I was autistic, but I didn't, I didn't quite accept myself. So, uh, my support system, my family, had, had, like suggested that I could try this pageant, and because they knew, like I had an interest. When I was a teenager, I had this interest of watching Terra's Next Top Model, and because I was really slender. And I was always told I look so pretty, so I was like, ah, let me just try it. I tried it, and I just tried it as, as a joke to tell you the truth. And but that joke turned into to a new opening of opportunities, doors to opportunities, endless opportunities. Because from there, that's when I learned to now accept myself as a different person in society. Um, I learned to become humble as well because my parents had the opportunity or they had the opportunity to take me to a school, uh, a, special, a special school and the therapy was provided for me to see uh, other children or adults that are in uh, low-income areas gave me an inspiration because it's it takes a lot of it takes a lot of time to get to where a person should be, if be it the autistic or not. But the therapy really, 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 really helps a person. Okay, by the way, talking about the special schools, what's your take on school inclusivity? Like, do you feel like people with 
special needs should be put in special schools or they should be included in normal schools mm. and just go through the normal system that we go through but still there are some caregivers and people who take care of them in those normal schools. What's your take on that? Okay, integration, I know we push, we are pushing, we are really trying to push it to society so that we are secluded or excluded from society, but because um, each, each, each and every one of us learn per our pace, I think also we need to consider that there are some challenges that we go through. Because in, in high school, or the special schools that I went through, we were a few of us in class, we were like five or six. And in an ordinary school, you'd probably like, unezako, like I think 30 children in a class, or more than that. And then it's how many teachers. Unajua, it, it depends with how many teachers are there that will focus on that Yeah, I have seen child. some schools, like um, City Primary, where they have like the normal system, but there's a unit for people with special needs. There's a unit for autism, there's a unit for... Yeah, I think that would be better for the inclusivity, because you also get a chance to interact with other students, and you won't feel left out, mm. because in as much as you are interacting outside the school, inside the school, you, you are in different units, so you still interact with other kids with special needs, but outside the school, it's just there. Same environment. Mm. Yeah. I think because I, I grew up in such a setting because uh, the, the normal school that I was in was actually split. Yeah, there was the part for the special needs. The special unit actually it was a class and then the rest of the school was just kawaida. Yeah. So as we wind up, uh, several organizations are dealing with autism advocacy. What, do you, what are your thoughts on their impact so far? Um, okay, it, it also depends with their, not interests, but their drive, the drive, because there's the awareness, but you have to look into the genuinity of it. There's a word like that. Yeah, I, I get you. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think that can be done in the organizations? because we are trying to create more awareness about this mm. issue. We are trying to break stereotypes. We are trying to make people, you know, like so cautious about this issue. So what do you think can be done like that? What do you think the organizations can do more? I think that um, they should learn to listen to uh, us, neurodivergence. I know there's the, there's, it's hard to understand from different different neurodivergence because uh, for autistic people we are there is the non-verbal and there is the verbal part so it depends on how you express and actually communicate with that person to know how like what how, okay this is uh, what is your take like you're asking me what is your take on this your your you expect response right yes. so you should also that's um, awareness should also be brought in and then that person should also be guided through how to communicate and express themselves yes Thank yeah Thank you so much for making time for us you're welcome anytime as we wrap up our conversation today, it is important to acknowledge that people with disabilities, including those with autism, still pass through many challenges and are still discriminated in our society in many different ways. By sharing stories and experiences, we help in creating more awareness, which means more inclusivity. Find us on all social media platforms at TV and for me at Lynette underscore Mumo. Thank you.